He's won nearly everything the sport has to offer. But Pete Weber has never been named PBA Player of the Year. Who do you think you are? I am. Can he lay claim to that elusive honor with a win today at the PBA World Championship? They come from all over the planet for the sport's most prestigious international event, the World Series of Bowling. 240 pros from 21 countries are here in Las Vegas. Among them, the PBA's best. All competing for the multiple PBA titles that are up for grabs. Yes! It's professional bowling's ultimate test, full of triumphs. Yes! And disappointments. And it's coming at you next on ESPN. Yes! PBA World Series of Bowling 5, welcome to South Point in Las Vegas, Nevada. This is the PBA World Championship. Time now to meet our finalists. The number five seed, 37 career PBA titles, including 10 majors. The only player in PBA history to win the Triple Crown twice. From St. Anne, Missouri, PDW, Pete Weber. The number four seed. In 2009, he captured the PBA World Championship for his first career title. When number two came at this year's World Series of Bowling when he won the PBA Scorpion Championship. From Saginaw, Michigan, Tom Smallwood. The number three seed. This four-time PBA Tour Champion and four-time member of Team USA from Fort Worth, Texas, the King of Swing, Mike Fagan. The number two seed is a seven-time PBA Tour Champion, including two majors. The reigning PBA Player of the Year from Montgomery, Illinois, Sean Rash. The number one seed was the 2008, 2009, and 2010 World Bowling Riders Bowler of the Year from Colchester, England, Dom Barrett. And hello again, everyone. Mike Jakubowski, Laneside, alongside PBA Hall of Famer Randy Peterson. Randy, this is it. The main event World Series of Bowling, full field, international flavor, and coming out of the two and the five spot today, major title and major implications for Player of the Year. Yeah, there really is. Sean Rash, the reigning Player of the Year, looking to win the award back-to-back -back seasons. But I think we have to mention PDW, Pete Weber. A lot of players feel that if he wins this event, he's your Player of the Year. Remember his last two titles. Who can forget two years ago this historic moment? That's right. Who do you think you are? I am. As he won his fifth U.S. Open. And then earlier this season, taking down Belmonte at the Tournament of Champions. It's a tall order for Weber today. He's got to climb the stepladder finals. And look at this. Murderer's Row of Champions. He takes on Tom Smallwood in the opening match. The winner to meet Mike Fagan, a major championship winner. Then Sean Rash, a major championship winner. And the winner of that match will face Dom Barrett. Tall order for Weber today, but if anybody can do it, 51-year-old Pete Weber can do it. The third member of our broadcast crew, ESPN's Kimberly Pressler, stands by with PDW. Thanks, guys. Pete, you know, you've accomplished every single thing you can do here in bowling except the honor of Player of the Year. Now, a lot of the guys on this tour think that if you win this championship today, it's going to be yours. Is it, how does that weigh on you? Well, I, I think if I'd win today, that'd give me a second major in, in the race, and I think the guys would really have to look at that. So, you know, if I win today, I, I have a pretty good shot at it. Good luck to you. Thank you. All right, let's check out the PBA World Championship oil pattern, 41 feet in length. Pretty good scores on this oil pattern. Notice no blue dive. 
the PBA is trying a bit of an experiment at this year's World Series, using blue dye to show where the oil is on the lanes. But PBA officials decided against using it at this one event since it's a major championship. However, it will be back for next week's World Bowling Tour Finals. So, now we are ready. The first world champion of the World Series of Bowling era will open things up. 2009 winner, Tom Smallwood. Light hit carries the seven, and we're underway. Great shot to start this opening match here at the World Championship by Tom Smallwood, a winner already at the World Series of Bowling this season. Hall of Famer Pete Weber says he's throwing the ball better now than at any time in his career. Strike a piece. Pete Weber made a lifestyle change, Mike J, and Pete is finally at peace with Pete. Remarkable what he's doing at age 51, but if you ask any of the players out on this tour, none of, none of them really feel that this is remarkable. They just say it's, it's Pete doing what Pete does. Pete said he changed his lifestyle just a little bit, and that has changed his outlook. His wife Tracy looks on. Drives it back. What a run he made to get to this point in match play. Using two different bowling balls, Pete Weber, the classic ageless style. The best physical game the sport of bowling has ever seen. Tom Smallwood now a two-time champion on the PBA Tour. And we've got a match. Double apiece. I'm not sure if most people know this, but Tom Smallwood is actually a full roller where the track goes between the fingers and thumb. We usually relate full rollers to bowlers that throw the ball straight. Tom Smallwood certainly doesn't do that. Pipes it over the second arrow, right through the pocket. You can hear just as that ball leaves his hand about the first five or six feet when it's on the lane, it's actually ticking the thumb hole until the ball flares off of it. Both players off to a great start. Major championship implications on the line. Winner here gets Mike Fagan. Opening match of the PBA World Championship five-player stepladder. Weber toes the line in the third. And we've got a turkey apiece. Take a look at Pete's arsenal. He's using a Marble S on the right lane, a Defiant Soul on the left lane. We've seen a lot of, of this on the championship pair here at the World Series of Bowling. Players using two different bowling balls, even though it's the same oil pattern. You could probably attribute that to, to the topography of the lane surface.
you see that? That's Pete Weber. That's PDW tripping out the 4-7-10 late. The Hall of Famer gets a nice break here early on to take a 10-pin lead. Smallwood needs to strike here in the fourth to even it up. one player in this top five that probably wouldn't be rattled by the likes of PDW. It's probably Tom Smallwood as we take a look at his arsenal using a Versamax. You can see the unique layout because of that full roller track that Tom Smallwood has. Rolls it up on that wrist and forearm. Super washout. Didn't see that coming. Yeah, I didn't either. This ball never even hooks coming off the end of the pattern. You can see it just, it, it almost looked like it hit a, a big puddle of oil right in front of the head pin. Open frame for Smallwood. Opening match of the PBA World Championship. Pete Weber with a win today would go third on the all-time list and break the tie. And it would be an unprecedented 11th major eclipsing the great record of Earl Anthony. Long way to go for that. But Pete Weber right now can take a step closer with a couple of strikes here in the fifth frame and the sixth frame. And another one. Fine bagger for Weber. And a big lead. Great shot by Weber, taking advantage of the opening from Smallwood. Now, what adjustment does he make on the left lane? Remember the last time on the left lane, a little high. Take a look at this great release, great rotation. Six pin goes to the wall, takes care of the 10. That's when you know the bowling ball is going through the pins the right way. Tracy looks on, sixth frame. And no! Six strikes denied. Well, the messenger goes in front of the 10 pin instead of taking the 10 out. Weber was running it out. He wanted to slap that one off heading into commercial. Bear for Weber, he sticks the landing, and he's got a big lead, 30 pins against Smallwood. Can he advance up the step ladder and claim that unprecedented 11th major? Stick with us at the World Series of Bowling. The PBA World Championship is brought to you by GEICO. Saving people money on more than just car insurance. By track, evolutionary, revolutionary. By Ebonite, bowl it forward. And by Storm, bowlers serving bowlers. Storm is the bowlers company. Welcome back to South Point in Las Vegas. The PBA World Championship is a major. So how did our top five make it onto the step ladder today? Well, after taking and combining the qualifying results from all four of the animal pattern tournaments here at the World Series of Bowling Five, which featured the cheetah, the viper, chameleon, and scorpion oil patterns, the top 24 players went to match play. Today's number one seed, Dom Barrett, 
was in control almost the entire 24 games of match play, only losing the standings lead briefly to eventual second seed Sean Rash. But one of the biggest stories out of qualifying was 59-year-old Tom Baker, who won the 2004 PBA World Championship. Despite rolling a 276 and defeating Jason Belmonte in his final match, Baker would fall just 27 pins shy of making the show, finishing sixth behind Pete Weber. Baker was denied when Tom Smallwood and Pete Weber both won their final matches, with Smallwood throwing 11 consecutive strikes to beat Mika Koivuniemi, 279 to 189. Five strikes and nine for Weber, four strikes in an open frame, which creates a 30-pin deficit, sixth frame. Smallwood working now on the open frame. Lane talk stats indicate that during the course of the tournament, Smallwood is 52% on strikes after opens. Back on it. As we've mentioned, Tom Smallwood already a winner at this year's World Series, taking last week's Scorpion Championship. The win, the second title of Smallwood's career, the first his incredible victory at the 2009 PBA World Championship. So what would a third title and a second major mean to Tom? Uh, it'd be great. You know, I'd have two majors. Um, I've never had the pipe dream of coming here being a Hall of Famer, but I'd love to come here and win a couple of titles. You know, this is our job to start living. This is our this is our dream of kids to come out and do this. So to win another major would be it, it's something more than I could ever, ever dream of. And a double for Smallwood cuts the deficit to 20 pins. The problem with his open frame, though, in the fifth was he lost count, almost like two opens in one frame. He went from shooting, he went from a 220 to 20 in one, sh in one frame. That fifth frame washout cost him a lot of pins. Weber up in the seventh working on the spare. 20 pin lead. Winner gets Mike Fagan in our next match. Perfect shot from Weber. All right, let's take a look at the Dexter approach featuring Pete Weber. Pete's been doing this his entire life, something that's very prevalent now with all the power players, this elongated third step right there. What that does is it allows him to get that ball up to the top of the backswing, back down, he loads up, and look at that position right there. He's ready to deliver the power into the foul line. Perfect. Jay, let's not forget the last time we ever climbed the stepladder to win a title. Just a couple of years ago at the U.S. Open, who do you think you are? I am. I have my coffee mug at home. When I feel a little spicy, I fill that up in the morning. You're not stalking him, are you? No, sir. More appreciation. Smallwood needs this strike. Eighth frame, he trails by 30 pins. Crossing over. That might be costly for Smallwood. He needed to keep striking to keep the pressure on Weber. He could have struck out for 259. Weber already in the 240s. Smallwood's relentless. Even though the open frame is there in the fifth, comes back with a couple of strikes, and now this one through the nose. Here's a look at champions in the World Series of Bowling Five. Wes Malott claims the Cheetah. Chris Barnes takes the Viper. Ryan Simonelli, the Chameleon. 
And Tom Smallwood earns his second PBA Tour title at the Scorpion. Who will fill that fifth slot? And claim a major. Foundation frame. Fills with a strike for Smallwood. Still possible 238. Weber needs to stay clean, out of trouble, fill frames with marks ninth and 10th. He will move on to face Mike Fagan. Just needs good count now in the 10th frame. He knew that was the shot. Spare ball down the middle. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Weber moves on, takes on Mike Fagan in the next match. A good run for Smallwood comes to an end here at the PBA World Championship. The 2009 winner, the first of the World Series of Bowling era. Our next match, Pete Weber, Mike Fagan, is coming up next when the World Series of Bowling returns. PBA World Series of Bowling 5 continues. Opening match at the PBA World Championship, Pete Weber a winner, 258-237 over Tom Smallwood. Randy Peterson is lane-side with PDW. Thanks, Mike J. Pete, nice opening game there. Pretty tidy, pretty clean. Why the two different balls on this oil pattern? Uh, well, it just seemed like the one ball on the right lane reacted better to the lane condition that was out. The ball on the left lane reacted better to that. So, you know, and you know I'm not afraid to throw two balls, so... Let them pick a lane which they want to make me finish on. Great choice. Hey, Pete, thanks for your time, and it's always nice to have Tracy here. Yes, it is. Randy and Pete talked about the oil pattern, and the oil has been getting quite a bit of attention here at the World Series of Bowling. For the first time ever, the PBA has figured out a way to add a blue dye to the oil, which now makes it easy to see exactly what the players have to contend with. The dye was used at the four animal pattern championships at this year's World Series. The longest of those patterns, the Scorpion at 47 feet. Tom Smallwood, the winner there. The next longest pattern was Chameleon at 43 feet, dominated by Southpaw Ryan Simonelli. Then came the Viper at 39 feet, Chris Barnes earning his 16th career PBA Tour title there. And the shortest pattern, Cheetah, at 35 feet, where Wes Malott shot a 243 in the title match for the win. Because it's a major, there's no blue oil at today's PBA World Championship. But we'll see the oil again next week, literally, at the World Bowling Tour Finals. Coming up next, Pete Weber goes up against today's number three seed, Mike Fagan, here at the PBA World Championship. Welcome back to the PBA World Championship at South Park in Las Vegas. Mike Jakubowski, Randy Peterson with Kimberly Pressler. And our next match, Pete Weber, the number five seed, goes up against the King of Swing, Mike Fagan. Weber a winner in our opening match against Tom Smallwood. Back to work on the way up the stepladder. Opening strike shakes out the seven. Unfortunately for Mike Fagan, I'm not sure how many remember the fact that he was the victim of who do you think you are I am losing the Weber by one pin two seasons ago at the United States Open. Two titles for Fagan last season, including his first major at the 2012 USBC Masters right here in Vegas. 
in pursuit of another major. And a strike, splashing the rack. Big, long, high arm swing, very loosey-goosey. Snaps that wrist at the bottom, and there's where the power is created. PBA stats provided by Lane Talk during the course of the World Series of Bowling. Fagan's strike on strike percentage at 65%. As Fagan's parents looking on. And a double for Fagan. Nice start for Mike. Does Weber stay on top of the transition? Does he make the moves before the lanes break down? That's going to be the big question in this match. Weber strikes and answers Fagan's double with one of his own. Steady that head as you could put a bowl of fruit on it. Weber once again shreds the rack. There you go. Shh. PDW bowling. Double apiece. Match number two. Winner here gets Sean Rash in the semifinal. Third frame. Oh, geez, but splashes the rack. Hi, Pete. You're okay. <laughs> Whether you love him or you hate him, he's great television. Myself, I personally love him. I don't know if you can tell or not. I've known that man for about 32 years. Five shots, five strikes. Match number two, Fagan back up. Four-time Team USA member. Trying to keep pace with Weber here. Third frame. That's going to creep high. Almost gets the big break. Everything but the 10. Mike Fagan trying to find his zen. Almost gets a great break here. Going through the nose. Leaves the 3-6-10. 3, six, ten. three six. Gets knocked down. Only the 10 pin. That's a nice break because he saves count. Nine spare when you're on a double is way better than seven spare when you're on a double. Especially with Weber throwing as many strikes as he is. Take a look at Mike Fagan's arsenal throwing a Marvel Pearl. Interesting, he's only using one ball for the two lanes, Weber, two different pieces of equipment. Perfect hit for Fagan and a strike in the fourth frame. Weber, as he did in the opening match, opens with a turkey. Working now in the fourth frame, plus 11. Shakes the rack. Weber's got four in a row. Well, in his first match, he started with a front five against Smallwood. Weber, four in a row, shreds the rack on that shot. This is why you put rotation and power on a bowling ball. 
so you can carry off hits just like this. As a player looking for transition, Pete will take special note or notice on that last shot that went pretty high flush on the left lane. Look for Pete to start migrating a little bit more towards the center of the lane on the left lane. Fagan on a strike. Just one miss. Back in this lane in the third. And he doubles, cutting the lead to 21. Ten shots, nine strikes. The one miss, the difference. Left lane for Fagan now, sixth frame. Drills it. Great shot there by Mike Fagan, cuts the deficit to 11. Both players off to a great start. Match number two here in Las Vegas, Pete Weber seeking his holy grail. A major championship win and a player of the year honor. Stay with us. Welcome back to the PBA World Championship midway through match number two. Pete Weber with an 11 pin lead. Pete Weber, PBA Hall of Famer. Was he ever destined to do anything else with this? I love bowling for one. I mean, I, I'm very passionate when I'm out here about my bowling. Uh, I want to win. The, the, this is what I chose to do for my life. So 34 years, I want to win. This is what I'm here for. That's what he's here for. And he continues to perform at perhaps the best level of his Hall of Fame career. Five strikes in a row. And a lead against Fagan, working in the sixth frame. The winner here will get Sean Rash, PBA Player of the Year, in the semifinal. <laughs> Weber avoids Whoa. major disaster. Whoa. That was close. Almost leaving the pocket, 7-10. The 10 pin barely gets nudged out of the way. And Pete's like, okay, all right, anything but the 7 10 split. Weber fills the frame. He's got a 10 pin lead. Mike J, I think it was uh, Pete's late father, the great Dick Weber, who used to do commercials for that ho hotel chain where he'd pop out of a suitcase and say, winning never gets old. Well, apparently neither does Pete Weber. Passed on in the Weber DNA. Pete owns two PBA World Championship titles. His third would be unmistakably historic. Seventh frame. hit. Ten back for Weber. Yeah, it was actually messed up too. Talking to Del Ballard yeah, right behind here. Pete Weber as Mike Fagan takes a re-rack. Oh, okay. Sorry, sorry. But you heard Weber say on the right lane he missed in just a little bit. The ball squirted down the lane, went a fraction too long, and that's why he came in late into the pocket. <laughs> 
Fagan, the four-time winner on the PBA Tour, seeking his fifth title and second major. Can tie it up in the seventh. We've got an even match heading into the final three frames. Mike Fagan. What a great shot. He can take the lead for the first time in this match with another strike right here in the eighth. Both players can go sheet for 279 apiece. The match is all square. It's a three frame sprint to the finish. Fagan will open. It's high. Whoa. And down goes a 10, just the four again. Remember the last shot Weber threw on that left lane? He went dead flush. Weber seems to be staying in front of the transition. The left lane seems to be the lane that wants to break down the fastest. Fagan almost leaves a 4 10 split. Every shot monumental to the finish. Clean frame for Fagan. Weber stands up now in the eighth, working on the strike, and he can make that work and increase his lead. Working that towel on that thumb as well. Pete's got extremely long fingers. One of the keys to his unique release is the fact that he's got under pitch in the fingers, his fingers stay in the bowling ball an extremely long period of time. And Weber shakes out the seven double and an 11 pin lead. With his fingers staying in the bowling ball as long as they do, his only option on the way out is that hand to be open. Look at that hand open. That's what creates that brilliant release, that extremely soft touch at the bottom of the swing. Weber now in complete command. One more strike. It's a 21-pin lead. Foundation frame. Sean Rash waiting next. Weber executes in the ninth. And another strike, 21 pin. Advantage, Weber. Weber had to go over and give five to Sean Rash's mother. Unfortunately, she was the recipient of the last chop he just gave. Unintentionally, of course. Mike Fagan will finish first as Diana Rash looks on. He can put 258 on the board, max score, ninth frame. Oh no, ring 10. It appears that Mike Fagan is going to fall victim once again in a major championship to the baddest 51 year old on the planet, Pete Weber. Spare here, strikes out, he can shoot 247. Weber would just need a mark. You know, one of the other things that makes Pete Weber so tough is the fact that I feel that his mind is very clear. One swing thought and one swing thought only. And generally speaking, it's just let go of it, meaning just get out of the ball nice and clean. Some of us aren't that fortunate. I know uh, me in particular with all the demons I have going on when I try to bowl. Make it in the 10th, gets the first. When I watch
watch Mike Fagan, to me, he looks like a thinker, a guy that's processing a lot of stuff at once. I think Weber's slate, or his plate, if you will, is very clean. Fagan takes his time. He wants to fill up the 10th for 247. And have Weber do some work. Solid pocket hit. Now the all-important fill shot, and it is important because if he strikes here, Weber has to mark. If Weber were to go nine and then zero, he would lose. So Ten pins here on the fill, very important for Fagan to have any chance. Remember, it wasn't too long ago on the right lane where Weber, in the sixth frame, almost left a pocket 46. Now nine would be a tie. Nine and zero would be a tie. Anything less, Weber could lose if he doesn't mark in this frame. Pete Weber, a clean frame away from advancing another step on the step ladder. Sean Rash awaits in the semifinal. Dom Barrett, the overall tournament leader, awaits in the championship match. Tracy's been through this a number of times. So has this man. Tenth frame. Oh, mama. Almost, but the seven pin stands. Uh, okay, I can speak now. Uh, that was a little closer than I think Weber or anybody rooting for Weber would have liked to have seen. Now he has to make the seven pin. If he whiffs this, we have a tie. He knocked it down by rule. That means you put a slash in the box. Pete Weber has advanced to the semifinal at the PBA World Championship, defeating Mike Fagan. Weber going to a ball change on this right lane. Too many close calls with a pocket 7-10 split. Pete Weber inches that much closer to his 11th major title. 258, 246 winner for Weber. He's alive for history here in Las Vegas. The PBA World Championship is brought to you by Barbasol, Close Shave America, Close Shave Barbasol. By Roto Grip, your time is now. Own it. By Motive Bowling, high performance equipment with a fresh perspective. Get motivated. And by Brunswick, find your next ball at bowlwithbrunswick.com. World Series of Bowling 5 rolls on. It's the PBA World Championship at South Point in Las Vegas. South Point has been a great host, and things are set to only get better. A spectacular 90,000 square foot, 60 lane bowling arena set to come online in 2015. Devoted strictly to competitive and tournament bowling and will host World Series of Bowling 7 that same year. We're all looking forward to that. Kimberly Pressler is standing by with the reigning PBA Player of the Year, Sean Rash. Sean, why don't you talk to me about the emotions that you have going up against one of your idols, Pete Weber, and you know he's also a very close friend. Yeah, Pete is a good friend, definitely been a mentor since I've been on tour, but right now he's not a friend, he's an enemy. Uh, end of the day, once we get done bowling today, we'll probably go out back and he'll be able to hold my baby and we'll have a good time. But right now it's just me in the lane and he's nobody to me. 
Do you enjoy competing against him? Absolutely. You know, he's one of the best the game's ever seen. Uh, him and the GOAT, Walter Ray, have had uh, so many things in the past and have given us young guys a future. So, uh, you know, hopefully I'm able to take him down today. Good luck. Weber advancing along the stepladder in duplicate fashion, 258, 258. And now it sets up an epic semifinal. Sean Rash, Pete Weber. And Mike J, by my math, Pete Weber's averaging 258 today. Very good. No calculator needed. but he trips the four. Senior carry. Here comes Sean Rash speaking about bowling his idol Pete Weber and another mentor on last year's world championship show. Parker Bone ran him down on the way up the stepladder on the way to an eventual PBA world championship. But now it's all business. Sarah Rash and Kaylee look on. Rash begins the semifinal. Powerful strike. Strike a piece. Sean Rash and Pete Weber have only gone against each other on television once. Sean Rash was the winner of that match, 246 222, and that was back in 2011. The PBA World Championship Johnny Petraglia Division Finals. PBA stats provided by Lane Talk. One of the interesting stats has been strike on strike, 67% for Rash after strikes. Oh. And the bucket crumbles. 2-8 ball, double for Rash. Great break for a double. The ball. It's fine. It yeah, yeah, dude. It was airborne. Going over that last shot with tour rep Chuck Gardner. Now Weber. See what happens on this right lane. Remember, this lane was trying to... Uh, to leave a 7-10 split a couple of times for Pete. Not on that shot. Double apiece. Hard to leave a pocket 7-10 when your ball hits there. I don't know what the adjustment was for Weber. If he just tried to roll it more and get this ball to read a little bit sooner and pick up. But that ball finished perfectly in the 1-3. Weber advancing along the step ladder. Match one, defeating Tom Smallwood. Taking out Fagan in match two. All even. Semifinal. Don Barrett waits for the winner. Third frame. Baby, take that, man. Carry that stuff on me, will you? Back-to-back -back trip fours on the left play for Weber. And he just gave Rash an earful. He says, don't you carry that trash against me. One man's trash, another man's treasure. I'm not sure Sean doesn't feel the same way about Weber tripping four pins on the left lane. Whoa. That shot there, if we can get a replay of that ball reaction down the lane, we call that upthebackplaque.com. That ball actually rolled out and stopped and left the weak 10. The eight, the eight looked like it was standing for a split second. Sean trying to really roll it heavy. And watch this ball reaction. See how it just kind of stops right before it gets to the pins. Picks up the 10 pin to Rash. First uh, non strike of this semifinal of the PBA World Championship. So, to counter that reaction, Mike J., as you take a look at 
Sean's arsenal, arsenal using the mastermind is a fraction of axis rotation. As we saw, the mastermind, the strongest ball in Rash's arsenal with a 10 out of 10 rating, the higher the number, the more hook potential a ball has. Strike. Rash back on the X in the fourth. Good shot here. This ball continues perfectly through the pins. You see the six goes and takes the ten out that time. Fresh set of pins and a re-rack for Weber. As he has done in each of his two matches today, he started with a string of strikes. He's done the same here in the semifinal. Fourth frame can extend his lead to 21 with another strike. He got around that just a little bit, but the ball freezes right into the pocket. And another great start to another match for Pete Weber. Front four looking for the front five for three consecutive matches. Looking to even things up against Rash on the TV record. Fifth frame. Five bagger to open. Probably be another one. Shot clock. Shot clock violation for Weber. Right now, that's the <laughs> farthest thing from his mind. Here's the last two shots for Weber. I want you to watch the hand. You see how that hand folded over just a little bit. Here's the left lane. Watch the hand. Nice and open. That's what you look for with Pete Weber. The signature trademark release. Rash is down 31 pins. Fifth frame. He's on a strike. He's got to know in his mind that he can not miss. Strike. Double for Rash, cutting the lead to 21 pins. And a better shot on that right lane. Just one non strike, creating that 21 pin deficit. Well, the players are lighting up this oil pattern. Low game on television today, Tom Smallwood, 237. Mike Fagan, 246. Weber, 258, 258. It's the 41-foot PBA World Championship pattern that Rash must navigate here in the sixth frame. You get a reset from Rash. Regroup. And that also will be a shot clock violation. Low feet. Good tempo. You heard him say it. There's three types of moves that he makes, and if he's two, three steps in, it's generally a timing issue. If he's one step in, it's generally a feel issue. And the other issue is sometimes there's crowd distraction. It's a reset. Back at it, sixth frame.
This ain't over yet. Don't you dare think about missing the second half of this semifinal. Weber, Rash, who advances to the title match? Find out next. Welcome back to South Point. The World Championship got a tight match with Weber and Rash. Director of bowling operations here at South Point, Mike Maniac, tremendous host here at South Point. And Mike is instrumental in the new bowling arena opening up here at South Point in 2015, which will feature World Series of Bowling 7. Big thanks to Mike, his entire staff, fourth straight year that South Point has served as host of this World Series of Bowling. My good buddy Mike Moniak used to bowl on tour with him many years ago. He's just a great guy, great host. Now look at what Weber has done. Left lane, right lane. 12 of 13. And at 11 of 13. Pete Weber has had five in both matches, but not six. Until now! Six pack! All right, now I want you to watch closely this next shot. Remember what Rash said on our way to break when he struck. This ain't over yet. If Weber strikes here, he's going to give Rash an earful. Weber on the front six semifinal match here at the PBA World Championship. Seventh frame. Revisiting the shot clock violation for players. The first offense is a $100 fine. The second offense is $500, and every offense after that, $500. It resets after every game. Cross lane at the 10 pin. Weber picks it up. 20 pin lead. And now an opportunity for Rash. Two strikes right here, and it's tied. Slow down. There's that timing block once again. Once he's two steps in, he senses something wrong with the timing, and he will back out of the shot. Another shot clock violation as the fines add up for Sean. Slow feet. Slow feet. Semi-final. Well, here are my Player of the Year candidates. Sean Rash leading the tour in money. A couple of international wins for Sean. Jason Belmonte's got one major win. He won the Bear Open in Milwaukee earlier in the season. Mika Koivuniemi, three worldwide wins. Weber, one major, winning the TSC, finishing second in another major. Really nice shot here and a good break. Nine gets nudged late. Eighth frame. Weber working the spare. Each player can max at 279. 
Well, Pete's figured out the right lane. He's getting his ball to go high flush on that lane there. He's pretty good on the left lane as well. This match is going to come down to the ninth and tenth frame. Both players tied. Max score 279 apiece. From here on out, it's all about who makes the best shots, who gets the pin carry. Is it going to be Pete Weber or Sean Rash? Foundation frame, even match, winner advances. Weber taking a lot of time. Lights and the seven stands. Bad time for that to happen. This ball pushes down the lane a little longer than Pete would have liked. See how it just kind of pushes and doesn't make the turn back up to the pocket, leaving the swishing seven. And I cut my speed on that one. Tried to keep it more in the line, and I did. And it just... Well, this is Sean Rash's game if he wants it. He can step up right now and strike out, shut out Pete Weber. Max score for Weber, 259. Rash, if he were to strike in the ninth and the tenth. First ball, he will shut out Pete Weber and move on to bull Dom Barrett for the title. Mom, Diana. And his wife, Sarah, looking on. Rash has ball in hand, ninth frame. Rash charges in front. Great shot there. He strikes on this next ball. We're going to see Mount Vesuvius. Good stuff. Really good stuff. This guy's been a human ATM the last three or four seasons at the World Series of Bowling. The last three telecasts he's made at the PBA World Championship. Now Sean Rash, one strike away from bowling for the title. Down. Spectator in the stands moving. Sean saw it. Positive dogs. Focus on you and the lane. Weber just hoping for a chance. I don't think you want to give him one, though. He's really good and has been really good on the right lane. Sean Rash right now in the 250s. Weber would need a double for 250. <laughs> And this is starting to get oh. really expensive. The first one was free because of the fan moving in the stands. That one's going to cost another 500. Big shot. The wait. Sean Rash has advanced to the championship match will face England's Don Barrett for the PBA World Championship title. Pete Weber can double in the 10th and get nine and have triple kit 258 today and not bowl for the title. It took 
all of Sean Rash's striking ability and talent and a 279 game to knock Weber out of the stepladder finals. Two seventy nine, Rash advances to the title match. He'll have time to regroup and calm himself down before he'll face tournament leader Don Barrett. Just a great performance once again from Pete Weber. Unfortunately, he ran into a freight train in Sean Rash. Championship match when we return. Sean Rash will face the Dominator, Dom Barrett. World Series of Bowling rolls out in Vegas. PBA World Championship continues. Time now for the Geico Championship recap a la Randy. Thanks, MJ. Match number one, Pete Weber versus Tom Smallwood. It was all PDW carrying some beautiful hits like that. He starts with the front five. It was all PDW, 258-237 over Tom Smallwood. Then in match number two, Pete takes on Mike Fagan. It was a carbon copy of match number one. Weber starting again with a front five. Almost there's a pocket 7-10 late. Pete just needing to convert the 7-pin to move on, and he does. Then in the match you just saw, Pete Weber taking on Sean Rash. Weber again off to a great start yeah. in the front six this time. Sean Rash goes double, nine spare, and then he gets on the gravy train with biscuit wheels, throwing nine consecutive strikes. It took 279 to take down 51-year-old Pete Weber. And there goes the stepladder, 258, 258, 249, not enough. Sean Rash advances to face our tournament leader, who is with Kimberly Pressler. Thanks, guys. Dom, just a few short weeks ago, you were the number one seed going in the Chameleon, but you lost to Ryan Simonelli. Today, you're the number one seed again, but this time you were going up against the reigning player of the year. How are you feeling the pressure? Yeah, not too bad, really. I'm quite used to the, like, this stage, so for me, it's just about going out, bowling one more game, doing the best I can, and hopefully that's enough. Thank you for your time. Randy, the semi-final, intense. A little different feeling in a contrast of players. Dom Barrett brings a different perspective and personality to this title match. Yeah, a little different energy in the Dom Barrett camp. I mean, you know, we saw just the intensity of two of the most intense players out here, Weber and Rash. Uh, Dom Barrett, uh, very cyborg-like. You're not going to get uh, a whole lot out of him, a lot internally. We'll see what happens if he gets close to possibly winning his first major. First major for Barrett, or will Sean Rash put his stamp on the World Series of Bowling? Ten frames, uninterrupted, coming at you next. Welcome back to the final title match of the year, the PBA World Championship. Last year in the PBA World Championship, Parker Bonafer qualified 24th, qualified for the show 5th, and ran the step ladder to a major yes. victory. Yes. Yo, Las Vegas! And a new winner this year. Who's it going to be? The Earl Anthony Trophy will be picked up by Sean Rash or Dom Barrett. Tournament leader Barrett says, Mr. Ash, you shall begin the match. A trophy named after Earl Anthony because of his complete dominance in this event. Opening shot, title match. Buried. That's 10 in a row from the last game to this game, folks. Remember, he finished with the back nine. Starting this game, striking in the first frame. <coughs> A 
The last time Don Barrett bowled for the title just a few weeks ago against Ryan Simonelli and ran into a freight train. Don Barrett matches Sean Rash with a strike of his own. And Dom knows going into this title match that it's going to take a huge game to beat Sean Rash. At least that's the mindset that he has going in. Whether or not it, it materializes, we'll have to wait and see. But the mindset going in, better lace up and tighten up the striking shoes because he's going to have to throw a lot of them. Don Barrett is a three-time World Bowling Riders Bowler of the Year. Only male ever to win that award three straight times. Locking horns with the PBA Player of the Year here in the PBA World Championship. Double for Barrett. Head to PBA.com to find out how you can join the growing number of fans following the PBA on Twitter. Get tweets featuring PBA Tour news, tournament updates, and find out information about linking to Twitter accounts of your favorite PBA star. Click the Twitter link on PBA.com homepage and get started. PBA on Twitter. Double a piece. Yeah, he liked that, kicking that 10 out late. Not a bad thing. This could turn into a title match and a major championship as whoever misses first loses. Oops. Regroup. That was loud. No shot clock violation. Somebody dropped something in the bleachers. The last match cost him a few bucks, Mike J. We are in Vegas, though. Maybe he can make it up in the casino. Quite a few. That's just the operation of Rash. Back off if it doesn't feel right. Look out. Good break there. No 4-7 standing with the twins on the right. ball checks pretty early. Never pushes right because it grabs as soon as it hits the lane and right through the old schnozzola. Chops the six off the ten open frame. Not what you would have expected, especially after the brilliant game he bowled against Weber. Rash gets up and chops the six right off the ten. <laughs> Nothing you can do now except regroup and hope that Dom Barrett doesn't run away with it. Barrett on the double. Takes advantage with a turkey. Tom Barrett's arsenal, the bite. This guy's got so much talent. I remember watching him warm up a couple of weeks ago when he bowled for the title, and Del Ballard and I were standing next to each other watching him saying, you know, Del, at our finest moment, our finest hour, bowling our best, we never threw it as good as Don Barrett throws it now. He says, I know you're right. Barrett cranks it up in the fourth frame. A little high. Horton. All right, I'll hold on this way. It's okay. This ball actually rolls and stops right in front of the head pin, and it's probably a good thing it did. Otherwise, he may have been leaving something a little bit more than just a four pin. Barrett picks up the spare, and as calm as his demeanor is on the outside, you heard him say, calm down. Oh, yeah, I guarantee his heart's racing. He's got, uh, he's got lots of 
brainwave activity going on. Right now he's just uh, trying to get s settled in, get acclimated to the oil pattern, make sure that he's using the right ball, playing the right line, and then see what his opponent's got in store for him. Lane talk stats indicate strikes out opens 63% for Rash at the World Series, and he cashes in there. See Rash taking the shoe brush to that sliding sole, and what it does is it makes the nap of that sole coarse and helps him to stop. Once the nap of that sole gets too smooth, the player, he loses that friction, that contact with the, the approach. Sean Rash, power player, doesn't like to slide a lot. Oh! For a moment, the 710 reared its ugly head. Good shot here, and, and just bad pin carry. 10 goes down late, seven pins still standing. Remember, he chopped the spare in the third frame. He's had a history of make, missing spares at the WSOB. You know, and as good of a match as he bowled against Weber, Mike J, as intense as he was and as focused as he was because of who he was bowling against, my question is, has he lost focus from the last match to this? He doubles, probably change if he doesn't stick with it. It's kind of like bowling a 300 game and then trying to get over that. Barrett. Flush hit, 10 back, 23 pin advantage, halfway home in the title match of the PBA World Championship. PBA stats by Lane Talk indicate that on strikes, on strikes, Don Barrett 66% of the time taking advantage of a strike with a strike. One more strike here in the sixth. He will open up the lead to 33. Let's see what kind of adjustment he makes here on the left lane. Somebody moved in the stands, no shot clock violation. Both players trying to suck in some oxygen. Barrett on the approach, sixth frame, working a strike, increases lead, mix, and a 33-pin advantage, Barrett. Yeah, that's about as excited as Dom's going to get. It's a good, confirming what he feels with his tour rep. Now, let's take a look at this game. Look at that cupped wrist and that elbow snap at the bottom. He makes the power out of his hand look so effortless. Seven pin stands for Rash, and he's lost his carry. Well, if you're Sean Rash, you, you got to be asking yourself, and that's probably why you got the the uh, the sarcastic grin after this shot. This pin carry is terrible. I mean, he throws like four pins over at the seven pin, and none of them hit the seven pin. Really? That power and 16 pounds of mass? It's ridiculous. Looks like my pin carry. Rash fills the frame, running out of frames. Coming up next Sunday, 1 p.m. Eastern on ESPN, the World Bowling Tour Finals Women's Division. Missy Parkin, Liz Johnson, and the tournament leader, Kelly Kulik. Also on that same show, the men's division will compete for the World Bowling Tour title, Mike Fagan, Mika Koivuniemi, and Sean Rash next Sunday on ESPN. Sean Rash taking some extra time and a re-rack. He's got four frames left and a 34-pin deficit to manage. 
He can still shoot 235. Seventh frame. You know, the trash talking's great, but he's not getting in Dom Barrett's dome anytime soon. This kid's full of international and U.S. experience. Even though he's only won one title here stateside, even though he's never been in this situation, this guy's got a ton of maple moxie. Let's see what he's made of here in the seventh and eighth frame. Can increase the lead to 54 with two more strikes. Sing and uh, he has a seven pin. You heard him say it could have been better. We'll shake her seven there, but nine spare is going to be okay. Followed up with a strike in the eighth. If he spares here, he can strike out for 258. Max score for Sean Rash, 235. Twenty eight qualifying games against four different animal patterns. Dom Barrett stood atop the field to earn this number one seed for the PBA World Championship, trying to take it home and earn his first major title on the PBA Tour. Leads by 33, working a spare, a frame. Good indeed. Well, Barrett, your tournament leader, chose to finish on that left lane. Nice shot there. Watch this. Nice loose arm swing, shoulders get open, wrist and elbow snap at the bottom, 10 in the pit, oh hum. Now Sean Rash must strike situation. He's only in the 190s. He has to strike out, in my opinion, to have any chance of winning. Gets a seven that time. It's a double for Rash. Cuts the lead to 23 pins. Foundation frame, PBA World Championship. Title match, Englishman, Dom Barrett trying to bring home a major title. Sean Rash is doing what he can. Back and forth to the equipment table. He doesn't strike here. He, he has no chance of winning. Because Don Barrett's not going to go back to back open frames. Hold on, my finger pinched my finger. Ow. There's a timing block. That was a feel block. Well, he smashed his finger in between the two bowling balls. Back to the shoe brush, back to the rosin. Staying with the same routine. That's the good thing. Positive thoughts. Yeah! You so Your tournament. Well, uh, great shot. I'm sure, Don Bear. Focus on your hands. Thinks otherwise. Again, Sean Rash, max score 235. Dom Barrett can strike in the ninth, go nine spare nine in the tenth, and shut out Sean Rash. The biggest shot of Dom Barrett's professional career coming at you right now.
That was the one he wanted. Now he'll have to finish the match in the 10th frame on the left lane, needing a double and count to lock Sean Rash. But first things first, converting the 10 pin. Spare for Barrett. And now we move to the 10th frame. Ball in hand for Dom Barrett. He can control his destiny and claim the title and the Earl Anthony Trophy right here. Two strikes, eight sticks will shut out Sean Rash. Anything less than Rash can step up and perform in the 10th frame. Now taking a re-rack. That throat going a bit dry. Rash says, give me any chance to step up. Oh, really good. This is uh, where you start to feel yourself hyperventilating. He's telling himself great thoughts. You can see him breathing heavy. He said, he control the heart rate. Control the heart rate. It's all about how the mind processes the info. He's got to think, hey, this is just another shot. You've worked for this all your life. You've wanted to be a major titleist. Can you deliver when it counts? Yes, he can! It's not over yet. He still needs eight on the fill. I just hope that I just hope that Dom knows what the scoreboard is. He needs eight on the fill. I'm not sure that was too early for the react. He still needs eight. Holy cow. Dom Barrett, PBA World Champion. Bringing it home to England. I guess I'm miscounted. I guess I'm miscounted. I'm not asking for it. The first Englishman to win a PBA major title. Randy, he lost count. You heard him say, I, I guess I miscounted. You can tell by his reaction. But he threw a great shot on his fill. Maybe it's better he didn't know. Maybe. He paced the field and earned the tournament leader and he cashes in with this memorable pitch. Yeah! 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 Come on! He dominated the world championship. He dominated qualifying the World Series of Bowling. It's a great win for Don Barrett. It's a great win for bowling in England. It's a great win for the PBA Tour. Thrilling conclusion to the PBA World Championship. And Dom Barrett will hoist the Earl Anthony Trophy. We'll talk to our newest you, major champion Coming right after this. this. Bring it on. You can the PBA World Championship is brought to you by Geico. Saving people money on more than just car insurance. DV8. We are DV8. Tonight we bowl. By Radical Bowling Technologies. Wow, that's radical. And by USBC, the national governing body, servicing the needs of bowling.
To learn more, visit us on bowl.com. What's it like to win your first PBA Tour Major? Yeah! Yes! Yeah! Come on! Kimberly Pressler yeah! is with the Dominator. Dom, that was one amazing reaction. That was an early in the tent. How many pins did you think you needed? Was that a pretty sure that was it. I struggling to see the scoreboard from where I was sat. There's people sat in front of it. You're kind of going off what you feel is going on. You know, I thought for some reason that was for, to, for 240, but uh, I don't know. I got up there and regrouped pretty quick as well to throw another good one. So thank goodness for that. So might have to go back to school. Who knows? Well, you were the first Englishman to walk away with a major. Has that set in for you? And, and how much does that mean to you? You know, it means everything. To be a, a world champion against the amazing bowlers that are part of the PBA and to be one of those, you know, it's unbelievable. It means so much. It's, I'm sure it's not going to sink in until I get home Tuesday morning and get to be at home with uh, my fiance and we get to enjoy this with Cassie and miss her so much. And she's going to come out, but, uh, you know, love her with all my heart and I can't wait to marry her in April. Is this a nice redemption from uh, the loss that you had a few weeks ago in the Chameleon? Yeah, it is, you know. It's a long distant memory now, really, but uh, you can't win every tournament, and that was a bit of a, you know, a low of Ryan bowled so well that day, and, you know, you have to try and take your days when they come, and this one was mine. And what do you want to say to your countrymen back in England? You know, I can't wait to get home and see everyone, and thanks for all their support. I have to thank Storm, making the best balls uh, on the market then. I mean... I don't think anyone had a reaction that could the whole tournament, let alone in the, in the finals. And Turbo, thank all the guys at Storm, Dell, Jim, Chris Lemmer, helped me out all week. And you know, there's so many thanks, and I'm sure I have to go around and thank everyone and buy them a few drinks tonight. Congratulations to you, Dom, for winning your first major ever, the PBA World Championship. PBA Tour next Sunday on ESPN. It's the World Bowling Tour Finals. Women and men will compete. World Bowling Tour presented by PBA next Sunday at 1 Eastern on ESPN. World Series of Bowling 5 has produced some incredible moments, including today's PBA World Championship where Don Barrett walks away with the Earl Anthony Trophy for Mother England. For Randy Peterson and Kimberly Pressler, this is Mike Jakubowski. We'll see you next week for the World Bowling Tour Finals. Congratulations to the Dominator, Don Barrett.